Hey everyone, I'm Vanessa Keir, author and Scrivener coach. Welcome to the first in my series of videos on what to expect when you upgrade from Scrivener 2 to Scrivener 3 Mac version. This video is about comparing the menus. As you can see here, I've taken a screenshot of each of the menus. And just to give you a heads up, this video is only going to talk about what is now in each of the menus in Scrivener 3 so that you can find your favorite features that you were using in Scrivener 2. I'm not going to talk about what some of the new Scrivener 3 features can do. That's not the purpose of this video. I will point out that there are two new menus in Scrivener 3. There is an insert menu and there is a navigate menu. So let's get started with the comparison. Here's the comparison between the file menus. And you can see that the Scrivener 3 file menu is a bit longer. It's also organized a bit differently. So you've got your new project open, recent projects, which were all in the old version. Then it has this new section for favorite projects. And just to give you a heads up, this is not what you're used to thinking of with your favorite documents in Scrivener. This is actually just adding your project, your entire Scrivener file, to a list of favorite projects. And then in addition to finding all your projects in Spotlight, you now have a show project in Finder. It's condensed the close and save options just a bit. It's gotten rid of the close all. You've got your import, export, sync, backup, etc. Everything from this point down is the same. All right, let's go over and actually take a look at the file menu inside of Scrivener 3. So we'll go up to our file menu, and you can see here that you have a favorite projects, which is a new option, and I have added a project called Tech Talk Articles to this list, and then you have the option to clear favorites from this sideways menu. And then on the main menu, you have the option to add a project to your favorites. So if I was going to add the current project I'm in, this novel format template to my favorites, I could do that by clicking this. And then if we go down, imports the same export, you now have the option to export as a Scrivener 2 project, because if you remember, Scrivener 3 converts all current Scrivener 2 projects to the Scrivener 3 format when you open them in Scrivener 3, and then your sync and backup. All right, on to the next menu. Here is a comparison of the edit menus. So you can see that the first section on each have the same commands, but Scrivener 3 has just given delete its own section. Then Scrivener 3 has taken some of the select options and put them into a flyaway menu that you would access to the side of this. And then it's done the same thing. It's condensed completions. Then move used to be in the old documents menu for Scrivener 2, but it's now under edit. Then the append selection has been moved up, and now you have your link section. Down here you have find, spelling and grammar. Substitutions is where you will now find your option for switching to smart quotes and em dashes. That used to be under the format convert menu for Scrivener 2. Transformations also pulls in some of the options that were under that format convert menu, such as making things uppercase. Your text tidying also brings in some of those options, and there's some new ones in there too. But some of the older ones that you might be familiar with would be the converting multiple spaces to single spaces. Speech has been moved up into this area. Then you have your writing tools, your dictation, and your emojis as usual. All right, let's go over into Scrivener 3 to take a look at the actual edit menu. So we're in Scrivener 3. Let's go up to the edit menu. 
And a copy special, you'll notice first of all that this has been rearranged a little bit. In Scrivener 2, the HTML options were up top. Now they're down at the bottom. And there had been a copy as BB code previously, but now they have a copy as markdown. Copy without comments and footnotes is the same. And then they have added this copy documents as a structured link list. And again, I'm not going to go into what these mean. I'm just showing you where things are and what new options you have. Now we can go down to the select menu option and you see you have a wide variety of things you can select, including by styles, which is a new feature of Scrivener 3. Then you have your completions side menu, which has these three options, complete, complete document title, add selection to autocomplete list, move, which in Scrivener 2 was under the documents menu is now here. You have your append selection, which is the same, your link options, which now lets you also link to a bookmark, and then your find, spelling and grammar, substitutions. As I mentioned, some of these came over from the format convert menu in Scrivener 2. Same with your transformations. So you might want to just, you know, familiarize yourself with everything that's in here. You've got your speech. Your text tidying is new. Again, it brings in some of those format convert options here. And you've got your writing tools, which now has a new linguistic focus option. And then your dictation and emojis are the same. All right then, back to the comparison. So here is one of Scrivener 3's new menus, the insert menu. And as you can see, anything that I have put inside of a red box comes from the Scrivener 2 edit insert menu. And so that would include things like image from file, image link to file, your math type equation, your break, your horizontal line, your auto number, your word count, character count, and your endnote marker. Anything that's inside of a blue box comes from the Scrivener 2 format menu. That includes table, comment, inline annotation, footnote, inline footnote, and bibliography and citations. And then there are two new options, the image link to document and the current date and time. So let's go into Scrivener 3 and take a look at this menu. Okay, as I mentioned in the previous slide, Scrivener 3 takes a bunch of menu options from other menus in Scrivener 2 and puts them into this new insert menu. So one of the new options is this image link to document. So if you've imported a cover, you have an option to link to that. And then these two images here are actually um, PDFs found in your binder. You can see that those are down here in your binder. And then most of these other options were elsewhere in Scrivener 2. And what else is new is this option to insert the current date and time. So let's go back to our comparison. Here's the comparison of the view menu. You can see that Scrivener 3 has shortened this up. That's partly because some of the options from Scrivener 2 were going to show up under the navigate menu. So what do we have? The same top three items, document, corkboard, outline. The hide binder and the hide inspector were actually under this layout menu option in the view for Scrivener 2. For collections, this Scrivener 2 option that had the sideways flyout menu has actually been moved to the navigate menu. All that you get in the view menu is the ability to show collections. Editor layout, we'll take a look at that in a moment, along with text editing, the PDF display. Then you have 
as usual, your corkboard and outliner options, your use label color in, zoom has been moved down, outline has been moved up here. Then you have your enter full screen, enter composition mode. The composition backdrop is no longer on this menu. And then you have a show tab bar because that's a new feature of Scrivener 3. And then your hide toolbar and your customized toolbar as usual. So let's go over to Scrivener 3. All right, so in the view menu, let's take a look at the editor layout. And some of these things came just from the regular layout menu under Scrivener 2. What is new here is the copy holder position. And again, I'm not going to talk about what a copy holder is here, but just to know that if you want to access the position, you go to view editor layout. Under text editing, some of these, like the hide the format bar, were under the format menu in Scrivener 2, and some, like show invisibles, were under the format options menu under Scrivener 2. PDF display, as I mentioned, was under media. And then you have this show tab bar, which is a new option. All right. Let's go on to our next comparison. Here is the project menu compared. And again, Scrivener 3 is shorter. It has combined some things and also removed some things. So the first new option here is this project settings. And we'll go over to Scrivener 3 in a moment to show you what's inside of there. You've got your projects, targets, they combined project statistics and text statistics into just statistics. Writing history is something that's new. Then you have both show project keywords, which is from Scrivener 2, and then show project bookmarks, which is new. And then you have your empty trash. So let's go over to Scrivener 3 to see what some of these things look like. All right, so here we are in Scrivener 3. Let's go to project and take a look at what's inside the project settings. And in here you'll see some things that have moved over from other menus in Scrivener 2. For example, under Scrivener 2's view menu, that's where you would set your composition mode backdrop, but you now do it here under project, project settings. And then under Scrivener 2's project menu, you would have your custom made metadata, your autocomplete list, and those are now in this section. What else is new up there? As I mentioned, they've merged all the statistics into just one big menu. This is your word frequency that had been under your text statistics section previously. And then again, you've got your new option of writing history and show project bookmarks. So here's Scrivener 3's Navigate menu. As I mentioned earlier, most of these options came from Scrivener 2's view menu, such as this collections option with the side flyaway menu. The exception here is that this open option actually came from the documents menu from Scrivener 2. And then we have these two new options down here, plus the clear all navigation options. So let's go over to Scrivener 3 and see what's going on. So here we are in Scrivener 3. Let's go up to the navigate menu and see what we have. Go to Open Quick Reference. Collections are pretty much the same. There's a new option under Open. You can open in Copy Holder. Again, that's a new feature of Scrivener 3. This option for the editor is merely about locking it in place or locking the inspector to the editor, whereas under the view, the editor layout has to do with hiding the header and footer and whether you're how you're splitting it. Go back over to navigate and except for the PDF option, which is back in the view menu, the media, which was in Scrivener 2's view 
menu is now under Navigate. And you have Move Focus to, Inspect, and instead of Outline, they're calling it Outline Groups, but pretty much these are the same as what you had in the view for Scrivener 2. And then you just have these new options as to which um, area is being affected when you select. And then you can clear all of your options. And here we have our Documents menu. Again, it's shorter in Scrivener 3. We have mentioned previously that the Open feature from Scrivener 2 was moved to the Navigate menu for Scrivener 3. You have your Snapshots, Duplicate, Split, and Merge. Your new folder for the selection, Ungroup. Your Move to, Copy to, which is a new option. Add to collection. You don't have a sort feature here. Instead of favorites, you now have this add to project bookmarks or remove from there. You've got convert, autofill. Some of this auto generate stuff is under autofill. Then you have your default template and your change icon, and they've taken the move to trash from up here in Scrivener 2 down to the bottom in Scrivener 3. So let's go over and take a look at some of these menus in Scrivener 3. So here we are in Scrivener 3. Let's take a look at what's under this new copy to. You get different places you can copy it to, just like you do with the move to. And let's go down to our autofill. So your set selected text as title, which is a regular menu item under Documents for Scrivener 2 has been moved into this autofill set synopsis for main text and append synopsis to main text are here as well. Let's take a look at the format menu next. As you may remember, much of these options down here were on other menus in Scrivener 3. So we're left with font. Instead of text, we have paragraph. We have this new style. Then we have our table list script writing. Much of what was under this formatting flyaway menu in Scrivener 2 is now down here in the bottom of the Scrivener 3 menu option. And then we have a color option, our highlight, and our revision mode. This is what the format menu looks like in Scrivener 3. You have your font options here. Most of these are the same as things that you saw in Scrivener 2. In paragraph, instead of text, you'll notice there's a couple new things down here. There's this HTML header level, and then you can copy paragraph attributes and paste paragraph attributes. Then you have this new style menu where Scrivener has already set up some paragraph styles for you and a couple of character styles. You have your table options, your lists, your script writing. Color was under font show colors under Scrivener 2. You've got your highlight, your revision mode, your copy or formatting, paste, preserve, and default. So back to our next menu. And here is the last major menu, the window menu. It's basically the same, except that in Scrivener 3, it has all of these tab options, which is a new feature of Scrivener 3. And then you will see that the help menu is pretty much the same. They've just changed the language here from placeholder tags list to list of all placeholders. So that's the end of the video. I hope you found it helpful. The best way to get comfortable with the new Scrivener 3 menus is really just to go in and play around with it. If you're not sure that you want to make the commitment because it is a paid upgrade to Scrivener 3, you can go ahead and download the free trial version and play around. Um, but I would check out first my video on things to 
to know before you upgrade to Scrivener 3 because in there I do explain how you can run both Scrivener 2 and Scrivener 3 on your machine. Otherwise, it automatically overwrites your old Scrivener. And so I have instructions in there on how to avoid that. That way you can keep your working project in Scrivener 2 while you play around with Scrivener 3 and decide whether you want to go ahead and upgrade. I am enjoying Scrivener 3. There's a lot of little cool things that they've added, but there is a bit of a learning curve to it as well, just because some things have moved. And I will be doing some more videos in this series on comparing Scrivener 2 and Scrivener 3. So until the next video, happy writing. Bye.